my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop, and we have our work cut out for us once again. We have a nice old fiddle. It's an old one. The last repair that, you know, it's got a label in here of the fellow who repaired it. His name was Louis Albers. Louis Albers. It was in St. Louis, Missouri. And the cool thing about this repair was the repair was 1889. That was a little bit before my time even. That's a long time ago. That was the repair. So guess how old the fiddle is. Actually, if I was guessing, I'd say the fiddle is not a lot older than that. I would actually think the fiddle, if I'm just, you know, looking at it in my experience, I'm not the end-all be-all expert, but I, you know, I'm I've been around, I kind of know what these things are and what I'm dealing with. My guess is the fiddle's probably from the 1860s, 1850s, somewhere in there. I don't think it's a lot older than 1889. Yeah, that's my guess. It's a Stradivari copy, but it, I'm not sure where it was made. You know, looking at it, I would say it was European made. Honestly, don't know, but if I was guessing, I'd almost guess it was a German made Stradivari copy. But that's just a guess, total guess on that part. We're going to uh, do quite a bit of work on this, I think. Uh, the fellow that owns it wants it up in pretty darn good shape, so we'll see how far we have to go with that. I think we really do have our work cut out for us to make it up in really nice shape. You know, having said that, Honestly, the thing is probably playable right now in this condition. I could probably set it up and play it. If I thought this was a really super valuable violin, I would probably decline the job and say, no, you really need to take this to one of those specialist violin shops. I'm on the fence on it, to be honest, right now, because it is a nice old violin, but on the other hand, I don't think it's got that kind of value. I think it's a decent, you know, valued violin and we'll try to treat it with as much respect as we can. But I will use the methods that I use, and we'll just see where it takes us. Hope you uh, enjoy the ride. My friends, it's been several weeks, if not a month, since I rebuilt this bow in preparation for rebuilding this fiddle. The customer really wants it fixed up. He wants it up in tip-top shape. The back has come apart in the past and somebody has re-glued it. It's not perfectly aligned. But honestly, that's difficult to do. Even under good circumstances, it, it's really difficult to align those seams back up perfectly. It's not terrible the way it is. The worst part of this fiddle is right in here and the purfling is messed up. This tab, I think, that hooks onto the heel of the neck, I believe that's been broke off in the past. You can kind of see it across there. Anyway, he wants all that fixed up. I gotta be honest with you. If this was my fiddle, I wouldn't do any of that. I really wouldn't. I'd just more or less leave it like it is and live with that. You can do as much damage or more damage taking these things apart when they don't need to come apart. And I think that's why I've been dragging my feet on this because I just don't want to do this. I really don't. The saving grace for me is that the neck angle here is not very good. This is low. This is about at least a full eighth of an inch low, if not a quarter inch low. It's, it needs to come up quite a bit to get a higher bridge, to put more pressure on the top, to give it more volume, resonance, and the whole bit. So from that standpoint, the neck needs to come out of it anyway. When I take that out of it, this whole area is gonna get all messed up again. I, just, I don't wanna refinish this thing, I really don't. I just would just soon leave it like it is. But if I take all this apart and mess this all up, and, and, and honestly, getting that a seam apart again, may be really difficult. I don't know, I just don't wanna do all that. One more thing I've noticed on this fiddle, I've noticed this 
a while back too, but I forgot about it. And that is that this has been broke across here. You can possibly see the break line in there. There it is. Yeah, it's been broke all the way across here. It really needs a new fingerboard too to do it right. There's no reason to put something broken back on there like this if he wants to go to this much expense and trouble. I, I kind of think he took this to a violin shop and got a really large estimate because the estimate to do what he's asking from a violin shop would probably be on the low side about eight thousand dollars. Here in my shop billing him at a hundred bucks an hour this would probably be a thousand twelve hundred dollar repair I don't know how many hours I'll have in it that depends on whether I have to take this all apart too <laughs> I'm gonna take the neck out of it first since that really does need to be done I'm gonna see how all this plays out and there's a real good chance I'm gonna try to talk the customer into just letting me put the neck back on it at the proper angle and cosmetically trying to fix this up the way it is without taking it all apart. There's just some things that shouldn't be done if they don't need to be done. I've already talked to him once about it. He was pretty persistent. We'll see where it goes. A little bit of a correction to what I said a minute ago. I, I hadn't noticed but the customer has a note on the uh, time card that we're trying to not go beyond a thousand dollars on this repair. So that means I need to get this whole thing done in 10 hours or less. All I can say is we'll do our very best on that. I've got my homemade removal tool here heating up. It's up to 199, 200 degrees right now. Now that's Fahrenheit. It's set for 380 at the moment. I'm finding that around 420 is a better number, so I may up that. I'm gonna let it sit here and get real warm and we'll see how it does. This actually can go much, much, much hotter, by the way. you can. I think I can get this up to, I, I, if I remember correctly, something like 1500 degrees. I mean, this thing really can go very, very hot. It's got plenty of headroom here for what we're doing. Well, we're up to, looks like 400 degrees now, 398, three, somewhere in there. So it's above the uh, target of 380. That's what happens, these things, especially at the beginning, they'll heat up past their, their point and then they drop back down. Um, it, it's actually dropping now, 394. I'm just gonna keep this on there for a little while and let the heat really saturate it. I'm not worried about ruining this fingerboard at all because it's cracked and busted. So pretty sure I'm gonna just put a new fingerboard on there. There's no reason to try to salvage this one, I don't think. Temperature's down to 383 now, so it, it should kind of hang around there, I think. It'll drop a little below the 380 probably, but it'll come right back. One good thing about this is the thermostat, or the thermocoupler actually, is inserted in the same block where the heater is, so you get a pretty accurate reading here on your temperature. We're up to 415, 416 now, 418, 420. It's that quick. This thing's a very fast heater too, so it doesn't take long to get up to temperature. That's another thing I really like about this. The parts for building this, if you want to build your own, were discussed when I on the world's greatest side bender video. I don't remember the video number offhand. World's greatest side bender shows all the parts and components you need to make this. They're exactly the same. It's just that they were in the side bender versus this thing. The block of aluminum is about the only thing that's different. You just insert the the heater in the in the block of aluminum of your choice. If you want it to be a round side bender, then you put it in there. If you want it on, on this kind of a deal, you put it in here. That's really the only difference. That's getting pretty hot, I can tell. I'm not gonna get in any big hurry because I want this to come off as easy as possible. Might even send enough heat down into the neck joint, possibly, to loosen that a little bit too, if I'm lucky. Gonna just see if I see anything loosening up yet. Doesn't look like it. Probably gonna have to get tools in there, but I just thought I'd see if it would lift on its own at all. Doesn't seem like it right now. I'll heat this up. 
I don't think this will be that hard to get off. But I've been fooled before too. Really not seeing anything there. It didn't do anything so far. Wow. Nothing. No movement whatsoever. I'll leave that inserted directly under there. The heat will transfer into the knife too. I think that'll probably be fine. I know the knife was pretty hot whenever I touch the edge of the blade there uh, up here on the handle you could feel it the one difference about this heater by the way is that it has this uh, old bendable uh, conduit like this flexible conduit is over the wire on the heater you need that on this type of uh, deal because you're always moving it around and if you don't have this flexible conduit on here the wires will break off right at your heater they do offer this from McMaster Car, these parts. You want to be sure to get the one with the flexible conduit on it if you're gonna use it for this purpose like this. Now on the side bender, since you never really move that connection, you don't need the flexible conduit on the side bender. Otherwise, the parts are identical, and really even the heaters are identical. It's just that one comes with the uh, conduit and one comes plain. So for the side bender, you can just use the plain one. For this, you need the conduit. I can see it moving and it's going to go right down that crack too. I can see the crack opening up. There it is. The crack opened up and it came apart that way. It looks like probably hide glue up in there. I'm not really sure if that's hide glue or not to be honest. People always talk about how easy hide glue is to take apart with heat, but honestly I've had as much trouble with hide glue as I've had with anything. Like I said, I've done tight bond and removed tight bond many times and found it easier to be honest than, than hide glue. And I know that flies in the face of tradition, but that's the truth. I mean, I got no reason to lie about it. I've got a video where I took the neck out of my brother's guitar that I built for him and I know it was put together with the tight bond and I took it apart in 15 minutes, got the neck out of it. That's about a record, really. I mean, you can't hardly do one much faster than 15 minutes. This looks like this is gonna be a job, so I'm gonna get my chisels out. Like I said, I don't much care whether I tear this up or not, because it's already tore up. See if I can chisel under this black here a little bit to uh, get it to raise up, because this end is really stuck down. You have to be very careful about this kind of thing because boy you can go right into your hand real easy. Doesn't seem to be coming loose at all. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up to about 440 and the reason is because like I said I don't much care because it's not going to be reused. So there's 440 degrees. If that don't soften it up, I don't know what will. And one more thing while I'm waiting is, if you do decide to make one of these heaters, be sure that you, you know, treat it gently. In other words, keep the cables as straight as you can all the time. Don't be twisting them up and, you know, all that stuff. Like I said, you're just asking for trouble with this kind of stuff. It's fairly delicate. Having said that, this one's lasted a year or two now. We use it quite often. Caleb uses it more often than I do. Just, you know, treat it gently. Keep, keep the cables as straight as you can. Don't tie them up in knots and things like that and it should last a very long time. It's up to 443. Maybe I'll try again here and see if it's decided to give up the ghost a little bit. With the hinges all rusted and the fabric all torn I just can't really get under under it. It just keeps breaking and chipping because of how thin it is. 
So I'm going to try a little more chiseling here to try to get under it. Now it's coming up. Now we're doing something. There we go. Alright, no point in getting in a hurry. Put this back on there now. We'll give it another minute or two and we should be able to pop it off of there. But still cradled inside was one old precious thing. It was grandpa's old fiddle. Oh, how sweetly it rang. There it is, pretty much off. Came off pretty clean, just that broken area there. And I'm 99% sure that's hide glue. I don't see hide glue being any easier to take apart than tight bond. Tight bond would have come off with no more resistance than that and possibly less. So I'll show you what the next step is as soon as I figure it out. You saw me remove that fingerboard with this little knife. Some people are gonna wonder what this is. And it's a, um, I believe, and, and you know, this was a long time ago, guys, so don't quote me here, but I believe it was a artist palette knife, if I remember correctly. It was longer, and, and it, I think it kind of came back to almost a point, but kind of a round point. In other words, it narrowed back down. It was a palette knife, I believe is what they call it. And anyway, I cut it off, and then of course it's even shortened a little more over the years from sharpening. This is a really good blade. I've had a lot of other blades. People have sent me different blades and things, and I go back to this every time. And the reason I do is because it's very thin, but yet it's very, very stiff. Most blades, when you get them this thin, they'll fold up on you and wrinkle up on you and everything. And this blade has never done that. It's very, very strong. So I recommend you find you something like that. Uh, again, that artist palette knife, I think is a good place to start looking. I also then uh, ground back the bottom side of this so that you can get down low, as you can see here, because if you left it sticking out blunt, then you can't get down low without scratching up your thing you're working on. That was ground off there too. I just sharpened it again. I've got it like razor sharp now. It holds a pretty good edge, by the way. I am just going to see, you know, if I get lucky and find a little opening here in the back of this neck. Now, I don't have any heat in it right now. Might need to get some heat. Really, I'm, I'm chiseling off the glue that's kind of laying there, and I'm hoping to get behind that glue between the neck and the uh, block in the body. But right now, I'm not finding any opening at all. Grandpa's old fiddle plays. As I always say, it would be easy if it would just be easy. From his heart for my grandpa and me. I'm trying to get the neck heel down to bare wood to get between it and the glue and things like that. You know, whenever you have to take the neck out of something like this, for reasons other than a loose neck, they're always impossible almost. I mean like they're always the one that's glued in perfectly and that's the way this one is. It's just as perfectly tight as it could possibly be. I think I'm going to get the heater back out and focus the heat right here and let the heat sink down in to this heel. I'm going to use the heater on this knife and keep trying to pry it down in that glue joint. It's going to be a slow arduous process. I'll show you as I make little steps forward on this. The only thing I can say in terms of progress, before I heated this back up, when I would stick the knife on the end of this, it, it was kind of like you were sticking on, you know, like a rock. It was just hard and brittle-like. Now it's at least a little softer than that. That's the best I can describe it. I can push it into the glue a little tiny bit now, where before it was just like trying to push a knife into a rock. Had another little brainstorm here. The older I get, the more fog is included in those brainstorms. I've often thought, if I could take these scalpel blades and put a different handle on them, I would like them a lot better. Like, here's just one example of a handle. This is the, I don't know, I, I don't know if I'd call it a cheaper handle, but it's a, a small skinny handle. But the thing is that this 
thing that sticks out here goes way up to, toward the tip. And I often need to insert the tip deep into stuff. And then this stops you from doing that. Even on the cutting edge, the cutting edge is really close to this. Now for skin and things, this is fine. But when you get into hard things, the hard things hit that thing all the time and they stop you. So like inserting this down in here, the, the reason I like this scalpel steel is it's flexible, very strong, and it doesn't seem to break. It just, it possibly might bend, but it doesn't break. Now the X-Acto blades, they'll break, especially the very tips. So my idea was, what if I could put this in an X-Acto handle? All along, I like these little handles, you know, for the little blades. But I got out the big handle, and sure enough, I can insert it into the big handle. Now, granted, the problem is there's a lot of missing real estate here. There's a lot of open air where they've cut away for those other kinds of handles. But the blade itself is intact, and I can hold it in this handle, and I can heat up a great part of this blade this way. So my brainstorm is maybe heating up this blade really hot, as hard as they are and as skinny as they are and as sharp as they are, maybe I can make some progress here. Maybe I can get this to go down in this thing and do something. It definitely went further on the very first attempt than I've been getting. May have something here. Oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, it's going right down in there. See, there you go. You just got to think outside that box. Why I didn't think of this sooner, I don't know. And it's so sharp, it just goes right down in there. And it's so thin and it's so strong. That steel is just incredible. The, you know, you scalpel steel like that, it's got to be high grade stuff. And it is. It won't take too long now, I don't think. All of a sudden, I really, really like these scalpel blades. Wow, that's, that's working. That's way better. You need to get you some of these uh, some of these scalpel blades. Here's an example of it. I don't know if you can see it on there, if it's going to focus or not. They say surgical blades, a scalpel, S-K-A-L-P-E-L-L-K-L-I-N-G-E-N. These are the number 25 blades. That's, that's the blade I like the best. They have all kinds of blades for scalpels. I'm seriously liking this. This is working great so far. It's way down in there compared to where I was. My thought is now that I can heat up this blade really good, I can probably go right in on the sides too because it's such a thin blade. Wrinkled old hands love and I can still hear it laying up in heaven above all right it won't take me long now I'm going to keep working on this I'll show you the progress as I make some kind of like the fingerboard breaking I knew this was going to break off because it was already broke there once before again I took this real hot scalpel and just slid it right in there and it just popped it right out Everything I can get off of here to give me more access is a good thing. That didn't give me a whole lot more access, but a little bit. There's a piece of wood they've kind of crammed in here to fill the hole. It's not done well, so I'm going to pop it out. And it just popped out, so there we've got that. Now I can see a lot more glue squeeze out here and stuff that I'm going to take my little chisel and clean up this glue squeeze out. Maybe I can get to the neck a little bit better. That's not giving me much more access. I can't really see any place that I can insert the knife, but at least that heel's off of there so that if I start getting some progress here, the heel won't be the hold up. Most honest man that I ever have seen And his time on this old earth was most precious to me And you keep doing that with this hot blade and you will eventually get this thing loose. Much better. I went in as deep as the handle will let me there. And now I'll try to work it back out. These handles hold it pretty good, although I think I'm sliding out of it now, having said that. 
I think the handle's coming out of the knife this time. That's okay. That's what they make pliers for. Yeah, I had it down in there pretty deep. Pulling it back out became a little bit of an issue. One thing about this thin metal too is it cools off pretty fast. I'm sure this can be refined to hold this blade better too. Right now it's, it's doing a pretty darn good job. A blade this thin will heat up in just a matter of a few seconds. You don't have to hold it on there very long at all. He lived on Current River at the mouth of Blue Springs and at night the hills echoed as the old fiddle would ring. Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melodies. He played it from his heart for my grandma and me. You could almost consider this a double upgrade because these big X-Acto knife handles haven't been much use to me. And those little X-Acto blades haven't been much use to me. But now they will both be put to use. So that's kind of like a double upgrade. I will say one thing is it will go down in there. It's a little more difficult to get it back out, but it definitely will go down in there. And if that's the case, you're making progress as long as it's going down in there. All right, this thing's really hot now, so it should be able to make some progress now, I think. What would be really nice is if I could make a little better progress along the sides of the neck here, and I haven't been able to get much in there. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love, and I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. Well, I bent that blade, bent it in a couple of different directions, so I'll try a different blade. That's the good thing about these blades, they come in large quantities. So we'll get rid of that one, we'll put on a fresh one, and we're ready to go to the races again. But just a boy had the time, I remember a day thought you might like to know the difference in the blade thickness. This is the blade that would normally go in this handle. The blade thickness for this is 23 thousandths of an inch. It actually says 22 right on the blade, so that might be the, an indication. But anyway, I'm getting 23 thousandths right there. And when I check this blade, this scalpel blade, I'm getting 14 thousandths. So that's significantly thinner in a lot of ways, stronger. When Grandpa and that old fiddle some old tunes he did play Well now Grandpa, he has left us I am making progress where I was just not really making any progress before. And now I play it with love Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melody Whoops. Well, there you go, my friends. I did break one of those blades. I didn't think they would break, but I was putting a lot of down pressure on that, and it did break it right off. So there you go. Learning to use the new tool, you will find things like that. So it can handle a lot of pressure, but maybe not a full pressure. That's okay, there's more blades where that came from. My good buddy, Charles, the doctor, supplied me with a bunch of them. Thank you, Charles. Of course, the fact that this blade heats up so quick means that it also cools off very quickly. So that's something to take into account, too. Really not making very much progress along the neck here. Really seems too hard to penetrate that. If I could penetrate that, this neck would be off of here. Very difficult, I, I have to say. It's just about as hard as any I've ever tried to do. There we go, there we go. We made some progress that time. He played it from his heart for my grandma and me. Wrinkled old hands. 
So I learned something there about how to use this tool. Pushing at a 45 degree angle is really optimal whenever you're, whenever the going is really tough. The old fiddle is ringing up in heaven above. I feel like I've got this side here pretty well in there now. So I think I should be able to move to the other side now. And if I get this side done, this neck ought to be ready to think about coming out of there. Uh-oh, I bent over another one. It didn't cause any damage. It sounded bad. Again, just learning how to use it. More where that came from. The middle on this base side of the neck is really stubborn. I'm getting there again with the point and the 45 degree angle method. It's getting there, but it's, it's the most difficult spot so far. I will say you got to be careful because when they break off, your finger can go right into the end of them like that one did. Fortunately, it didn't cut me. Whew. Learning as I go. I haven't tried to rock the handle yet to see if it'll rock, but it's got to be getting pretty close. I'll go in from the top one more time here now that I kind of got those sides opened a little bit. Going in there pretty easy now, so hopefully now we should be able to get a little movement. Very little. I feel like it's still being held down here at the heel. If I could get this somehow inserted in behind it here, and I don't know if I'm in deep enough here, that's the problem. You can't really see the seam. It's in the wind, it's in the wind that you're leaving me again. There's no disguise. It's in I'm going to try to horse this big knife down through the joint one more time. You can't fool me this time. That's in there pretty deep. Believe me, there's something you should know. There we go. Now we got some movement. Beside me, just once before you go. This base side has been the hard side so far, so maybe if I can get this knife, this heavy knife in there, maybe we can make our final progress here. It's definitely rocking now. We're about there. We had a love so fine. We bound, we love each other until the end of it's in the wind. It's in to be truthful, there's a little bit of tear out right here on the bottom edge where I couldn't see that seam. The seam was back in there another eighth inch back under the back, which, you know, is a little unfortunate that it was that far back in there. But again, no big deal. Actually, I think that that's a wedge that was added on anyway. So I don't think that's a big deal. Um, in fact, I'm sure it's a wedge that was added on. And we'll probably have to add a wedge back in there to get it at the right angle anyway. No real harm done. Uh, we'll be able to uh, fix this right back up and you won't be able to tell it was ever apart when we're done. After getting the uh, neck out of the fiddle, I stopped working on it. Got sidetracked on a few other projects. But uh, I'm back to it. It's the next day now, and I'm going to clean it up. I have honed up this chisel really sharp, and the dogs are out there applauding. The wood that stuck to the back of this neck is pretty much just additional wood that was added in there as a shim, so it's no big deal. I can just trim it off and go back to the original wood here. When you get your chisels really sharp, this is very easy to do. 
I'm just taking my time so that I don't cut any of the original wood away. And uh, you know, this gets rid of the glue and the extra wood that's on there too. And that's really about all there is to it. You just clean it up like that. And you might have to clean up the edges here. There's a lot of glue on this. Once I get all that cleaned up, then I turn my attention to the neck joint here. Again, that remnants of that wedge that are in there. I'm going to clean that up. And the sharp chisel like that just makes it a pleasure to do it. We're going to have to inspect this really well and clean it up really well, but I just want to first see if it looks like it's all going to fit back in there. I don't see a real problem. I was hoping this joint would open up. It's not open. You know, right here in the middle, the joint is perfectly smooth. It gets a little off right in here. It's a little bit off back in here too. This is not off enough to care about, I don't think. This is a little more. So it'd be nice if we could get this apart right here and we could re-glue this while we've got this neck out of here. I'll look at that a little closer. Hopefully you can see that I have the microscope rig out here and I'm inspecting the seam under the microscope. Much easier to see the very fine detail. I'm using a scalpel blade and I'm using the back edge of the scalpel blade as a scraper kind of and I'm scraping that fine crack trying to open it up to get it apart so I can realign it. The trick of working under the microscope in this particular case is it's difficult to keep it in focus because I change the elevation of this and if you change the elevation of what you're working on then it changes the focus. It's a little difficult, it's a little tricky. It's very tedious and time consuming trying to get this to uh, cut this seam out of here without making a big mess. Odds are no matter what I do you're going to be able to tell it a little bit. But this is about the best I've got right at the moment. I'm just hoping that this will work. That if I can get this loose, I can realign it, clean it up, stain it, everything, and it'll look much better than it does now. But i got to be honest, this is not easy. These little tiny thin blades for the scalpel help a lot. They're thinner than the X-Acto blade by about oh eight to ten thousandths of an inch so that's fairly significant and I can see I'm making progress under the microscope I'm having to choke up on the blade a lot if I could heat the blade that would help but the problem is I have to hold the blade between my fingers to keep control of it so that it doesn't wander from one side to the other it's so thin. So heating it's not a very good option if you got to put it between your fingers. Under the microscope that really looks bad to the naked eye. You know, you can see it of course, but it doesn't look that bad. If I can continue along that line, I think I might be able to have some success here and get this apart and get it back together. I thought I might be able to give you a view of what I'm doing here in terms of what I'm trying to fix. There's a step there and your fingernail can catch on that. In other words, this side is higher than this side. It's not crazy higher. I'd say it's probably a half a millimeter higher, something like that. Maybe I can even tell you more accurately with the caliper here. 14 thousandths, so that's, you're in the neighborhood of a half a millimeter. 40 thousandths is a millimeter. 20 thousandths would be half a millimeter. We're just under that, so it's a little less than a half a millimeter. I've made a lot more progress off camera, but I'm still nowhere near having it separate. And our UPS driver just pulled up. So I'll take a little break for that. 
and then I'll get back to this eventually. That was the UPS driver. It was an instrument. We weren't expecting any instruments. Caleb said if it's an unsolicited instrument that just shows up here, I would consider it a gift. <laughs> so there you go folks. If you don't let us know you're shipping an instrument, it's a gift. So be careful. I'm picking out mostly glue here is what I'm picking out mostly but there's no way the glue joint is 12 or 14 thousandths of an inch wide which is the thickness of this so I'm getting wood too there's no doubt about that going up and down this line eventually I should get through I would think that's a good theory I just would like to see it in practice here and for the record, I have looked inside the fiddle, and there are no, you know, <laughs> there are no cleats inside the fiddle. Thank you, Caleb. He out of the word I was trying to think of. <laughs> I think that's all I've got time for right now, so I'll get back to this eventually.